So the beverage section of the grocery store is a pretty confusing section because it's in the middle aisles and there are endless sea of juices and sodas and bottled waters that are there. And so I try to bring a little bit of clarity to, you know, what are the three beverages that are um, unquestionably healthy for for you there's no real controversy of them all right because other drinks like juices and sodas lots of controversy lots of data but the three things i call the holy trinity of beverages welcome back to the longevity deprocess channel dr william lee has just revealed his trinity of beverages a selection of three drinks that he swears by for their health benefits but before we dive into the first of these rejuvenating elixirs let's take a moment to learn more about the man behind the science Dr. William Lee is a world-renowned physician, scientist, and author of the book Eat to Beat Disease. He has dedicated his career to exploring the relationship between nutrition and health. With degrees from Harvard, Yale, and the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Lee has spent decades researching the role of nutrients in preventing and treating illnesses like cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. He's the president and medical director of the Angiogenesis Foundation, a nonprofit focused on using modern science to fight disease through dietary changes. Now, armed with this wealth of knowledge and experience, Dr. Lee is ready to unveil the secrets of his Trinity drinks. So sit tight, grab a pen and paper if you want to take notes, because the journey to optimal health is about to begin. Stay tuned as we discover the first drink in Dr. Lee's lineup of health-boosting beverages. Oh, a quick favor, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. I'll drink to that. Um, our water, okay. Water actually uh, is critical for hydration, critical to maintain our health defenses, critical for our metabolism. You need water in the system, okay. Uh, and drinking water is something that is very natural and, and important to us. Uh, uh, and when, again, when you drink cool water, you activate these uh, temperature gauges in our stomach that are triggering our metabolism to kind of warm up uh, the water in our stomach so we don't cool our core body temperature. So there's even metabolic benefits uh, to drinking water. Water is also by satiating. So when you actually drink water with a meal, you're naturally stretching out your stomach a little bit. And rather than actually having food in there, that water stretch actually basically slows down your appetite slows down your hunger as well which also helps to contribute to preventing you from overeating as well so water is really good for you there's no you know like it's a, it's a human right to drink water <laughs> you know we we have to drink water it's really great footnote to that and this is actually something that i think really deserves um careful uh research more careful research is you know bottled water which is so commonly consumed probably will have microplastics in it almost certainly does and you know even though the research doesn't hasn't clearly nailed what the harm of microplastics are i would say it's probably not so good for you we can find it like attached to a red blood cell circulating in our blood that's that freaks me out actually to think about that so if you can drink water if you can if you can drink water from a source other than bottled water it's probably preferable you just heard doctor william lee discuss water as the first part of his trinity of recommended beverages he highlighted how drinking water can help prevent overeating and avoid ingesting microplastics from plastic bottles. Speaking of flavoring water naturally, here are some healthy ideas from Dr. Lee. Add slices of fresh citrus like lemon, lime, or orange. Mix in crushed berries like strawberries or raspberries. Try infusing water with fresh herbs like mint or basil. For a subtle sweetness, add a few cucumber slices. Getting creative with fruit? Veggie and herb infusions can make water more exciting to drink while avoiding added sugars from juice or soda. In the next clip, the renowned doctor, William Lee will reveal the second beverage in his trinity for optimizing health. His recommendations are backed by decades of research at the forefront of nutrition science. I'll drink to that. Second is tea. We talked a little bit about green tea um, as being beneficial to you. Um, and, you know, tea is the second most popular beverage in the world after drinking water. Uh, so we're talking about something that a lot of people have a lot of experience with. But I, but what I point out in my book is not just green tea. It's different kinds of green tea. Matcha tea is actually good for you. Oolong tea, which is slightly fermented green tea, 
also has metabolic benefits, also has polyphenols. And then for green tea, if you have matcha, you know, which you find in a ceremonial tea, you find in a Japanese restaurant, it's bright green tea. It, it's kind of opaque because it's actually made with powder and it's the entire tea leaf that's powdered. A lot of people don't realize this, but matcha is super packed with polyphenols. You know why? Matcha is grown in a very particular way. 28 days before they pick the the, the, the tea leaf from, to make matcha, they put it under shade. They, put, they, they basically cover it with a canopy and, and the shade is there. So the tea in response to the tea leaf, tea plant in response to shade actually wants to make more polyphenols. So they make anywhere from 30 to 300 times more polyphenols mm. under the shade. All right. And then what happens when you pick the leaf, you cut off the stem, and then they powder, they dry and powder the entire leaf. And so that's why you have so much more polyphenol. It's like a stress um, response to not having a, enough sun. First, it's a stress response to the plant. But then you get more rather than having it in a tea bag or loose tea leaves. You actually powder the entire leaf. So you're getting the entire leaf, including all the polyphenols. Mm. So you drink all the polyphenols, which is why you get 30 to 300 times more than just dunking a tea bag. You also get the dietary fiber. Good for your gut microbiome. So matcha tea actually is quite amazing. I actually done a study to show that, that, that uh, matcha tea extracts can kill breast cancer stem cells wow. I'm, I'm always amazed by that because look as somebody who's been involved with biotech development um, and cancer treatment development finding something that could kill stem cells cancer stem cells like breast cancer stem cells which is what makes cancers come back is a holy grail we don't have a drug for it but here matcha tea actually been shown in the lab to actually be able to do that to me is actually really jaw-dropping then going down into even more fermented tea, because traditionally, again, you know, this idea that in our wellness community, we wind up having all these mantras, um, must drink green tea and oxidized fermented tea is no good. Turns out that's not true. The science is showing that oolong tea, which is slightly fermented, also good for your metabolism. You can lose your waist, you can shrink your waist size, your waist circumference, lose body fat. And then even perhaps more surprising, if you take the extreme of fermented smoky dark teas there's a tea that i write about called poo er tea p-u apostrophe one e-r-h <laughs> one of your favorites right yeah. one of mine as well uh this is comes from a village of poor that um back thousands of years actually traded tea on the silk road so they smoked the tea they fermented it so it would actually survive the tea journey and it turns out research had been done to show that poo er tea lights up your brown fat, burns up, you know, triggers your fat, excess fat burning by burning the cells, uh, decreases your stem cells from making more fat, uh, and fi whites, uh, fats, visceral fat as well. Quite remarkable that this fermented tea that supposedly, you know, fermented, it's not, can't be good, doesn't have any of the polyphenols left, wrong. And on top of that, they've actually discovered just a few years ago that there is this, this tradition, thousand year old tradition of making poo or tea, there's even a bacteria, a probiotic that actually is, the bacteria is grown in the way that's fermented. In fact, they call it uh, puer silus, uh, like a bacillus <laughs> that actually grows in puer tea. So this is actually a, a probiotic tea, which to me is remarkable. And not only does it improve gut health, it's good for your metabolism as well. So it fires up your brown fat. So again, you know, tea is the second part of the Holy Trinity. You just heard doctor. William Lee dive into the amazing benefits of tea, the second beverage in his trinity of recommended drinks. He highlighted how tea after water is the most widely consumed beverage worldwide. Dr. Lee specifically called out matcha green tea powder, explaining how its shade-grown process increases the concentration of powerful polyphenol antioxidants. He noted matcha's ability to potentially kill breast cancer stem cells and touted its many other health benefits. He also gave a nod to fermented pure tea, which has been traded along the Silk Road for centuries. Pure acts as a probiotic tea, promoting healthy gut bacteria. With such an in-depth scientific perspective, it's clear why Dr. Lee is considered a leading authority on using nutrition to fight disease. Next, the world-renowned physician and researcher Dr. William Lee will reveal the third and final beverage in his trinity of recommended drinks for optimal wellness. I'll drink to that. <laughs> the third, um, which I always drink, and you asked me what did I want if I, you know, I was coming in to do this podcast with you and I requested a cup of coffee. Coffee has chlorogenic acid and many other polyphenols, but the chlorogenic acid not only boosts your health defenses, 
um, uh, but it also triggers your metabolism uh, and, and, and it stimulates your metabolism from going as well. A little bit of the caffeine, which I'm able to tolerate. Not everybody can tolerate caffeine, um, but I'm able to tolerate the caffeine. Caffeine also uh, stimulates not only your kind of like your brain, but also stimulates your metabolism as well. And I'm not encouraging people to go after caffeine. I'm just saying that coffee is one of the, the, the third of the holy trinity. Coffee, tea, uh, and water that actually is really, really healthy. Now that doctor, William Lee has tantalized our taste buds with the promise of coffee's health benefits, it's time to delve deeper into the world of this beloved beverage. But there's more to this story than meets the eye, and Dr. Lee is about to spill the beans on the finer details of coffee's health-promoting properties. So grab your favorite mug, because we're about to embark on a journey into the heart of coffee culture. From its rich history to its scientific secrets, Dr. Lee is here to uncover the truth behind one of the world's most beloved beverages. Get ready to brew up some knowledge as we explore the wonders of coffee with Dr. William Lee. Coffee uh, actually does all these great things, so let's recap. Coffee slows down cellular aging. Coffee stimulates your stem cells. Coffee improves your metabolism by burning down harmful body fat and you actually lose some weight along the way. And coffee is anti-inflammatory and coffee improves gut health. All right, all these benefits from coffee, one of my favorite beverages, I drink it in the morning as a pick me up. All right, I do think that caffeine uh, is really good. And if you're sensitive to caffeine, you can try to get decaffeinated coffee. All right, that would be fine. It still has chlorogenic acid, but just know that the decaffeination process removes a lot of the um, caffeine, not all, a lot, but it also uh, removes some of the other bioactives as well. But some people are sensitive and it's just fine if you wanna actually have that taste of coffee and get some of the benefits, uh, decaf will actually work uh, as well. Just not as good as the full test coffee, which is my beverage of choice. All right, I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Now that doctor, William Lee has shared the caffeinated wonders of coffee with us, it's time to bid adieu to our Java journey. But before we bid farewell to our beloved brew, let's recap the highlights of our discussion. Dr. Lee has illuminated the many health benefits of coffee, from its ability to boost cognitive function to its protective effects against certain diseases. But perhaps most importantly, he's reminded us that moderation is key when it comes to enjoying this beverage. As we prepare to take our last sip, Let's raise our cups to Dr. Lee for his enlightening insights and to coffee for its delicious perks. Coffee, tea, uh, and water that actually is really, really healthy. Please don't fear your food, you know, um, love your food. And it's just so amazing that we're so fortunate, actually, to be able to, you know, benefit from societies and histories and cultures that have actually figured out a lot of stuff for us. Um, uh, and, and now what's cool is that science is bringing us really to the cutting edge, that forefront, where we begin to understand why the things that taste so great are actually so great. Please consider giving us a thumbs up, sharing this video with your friends and family, and subscribing to our channel for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.